Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching NDTV, and this is Battle for States, a show where we track elections and their impact very closely. So, with just three days left for campaigning in Rajasthan, BJP and Congress are putting in every ounce of effort into the state. It's just that Rajasthan has not voted for an incumbent government in the last 30 years. So while clearly the BJP is more aggressive, in fact, uh, in the next three days, BJP leaders, including Home Minister Amit Shah and BJP President J.P. Nadda, and even Prime Minister Narendra Modi, are likely to hold multiple rallies and roadshows in the state. As we speak, you can see visuals of the Prime Minister uh, earlier in Pali, and of course, uh, he's also doing a roadshow in Bikaner today. The high-intensity campaign rolled out by the PM himself today uh, is only a testament of what is to come in the coming days. In its manifesto released last week, the party, BJP, has promised two-wheelers for girl students and also a crackdown on radicalization in an inference to the murder of K. Taylor Kanayalal in Udaipur last year. Now, this party has been talking about increasing rapes in the state, while the Congress has been stressing on the investigation being fast, uh, Ram Temple, cow welfare, infrastructure development, incentives for the girl child have all been an integral part of the BJP's campaign in Rajasthan, while Congress Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot has been talking about the right to health, welfare of gig workers and even a push to English medium education. But whose promises will strike a chord with the voters? Will Rajasthan stay, change its tradition of voting out the incumbent? And who will become the chief minister if the BJP wins the state? Those are the questions we are asking tonight. We are joined by political experts, uh, Avinash Kalla. Uh, we also, but first let's uh, go to my uh, colleague, Harsha, Harsha Singh, who's reporting from Jaipur. Harsha, so a last mile push by both parties. It's going to be three more days of many more road shows and rallies. And as we speak, the Prime Minister is in Bikaner showing a grand, I mean, in a, in a grand road show. So some sort of carpet bombing by the BJP leadership. Uh, and like you had earlier said, all of that converging in Jaipur in a few days from now. How do you see this last mile approach and what are the big faces of both parties up to? Yes, well, absolutely. You know, uh, everybody is out on the ground, actually. And, um, you know, they are uh, making that last effort, you know, because a lot of things change. The lots of swing votes actually make a decision, you know, about 50% surveys have shown that about 60 to 70% people decide beforehand. But sometimes that last 18 to 20 percent people who make the decision in the last few days, that swing vote is very, very crucial. And remember, Rajasthan, the difference in the vote share is just 0.53 percent as compared to the last election. So this election, you know, every effort, every last rally, everything counts. And we've been seeing that the CM has actually covered all the length and breadth of Rajasthan. And now from the heart, the capital of Jaipur, he's going to be doing that final roadshow. It's going to be the big ticket roadshow of the CM, uh, of the PM, I beg your pardon. And uh, all the other BJP leaders are already converging in Rajasthan, in Jaipur, getting ready for show tomorrow. So, you know, the last mile push is what we are seeing here. Of course, uh, Ashok Gehlot and Sachin Pilot also both crisscrossing the state. Uh, and the, uh, the Congress in that sense has taken the lead in, as far as promises are concerned because the show cannot started off with his Mehengai Rahat Khams, his guarantees. So in that sense, they've taken the lead in terms of poll promises. But in election campaigning, the BJP is now really surging ahead. Right. Harsha, so uh, clearly the BJP is trying out, uh, trying to reach out to the youth, you know, by, by these promises like investigation into this, these paper leaks. But the Congress is promising uh, the OPS. So that, I think, is a marker of difference in both campaigns, two strong promises. But with the Congress releasing its manifesto tomorrow, what are the expectations? Well, yes, you know, uh, uh, you know, the Congress actually has made all the promises it can. So I don't know what more is left to promise. But definitely, you know, if, it, if it's going to be put down in a certain format, which is the manifesto, then they are bound also to deliver on that. So, yes, definitely. And, you know, the thing with the Congress is okay, that they yes. have realized that making promises is not enough. You have to convince people. So a lot of the promises that they've made, they've said that they're going to turn these into laws. So, for example, OPS, if they come into a law, so that there is no backtracking on it later. So I think that's what the Congress has realized. And the voter is, of course, getting smarter. So political parties are also needing to, you know, rework their strategy to convince people. 
Right. Thank you, Arsha, for joining us with those details. That was my colleague Harsha Singh reporting from Jaipur. The PM is doing a roadshow in Bikaner and three uh, days of uh, lots of campaign activity in Rajasthan as three days are left for the campaigning to end. Uh, we have senior journalists Avinash Kalla, Shipra Mathur and Smita Gupta joining us on this discussion. Thank you all of you for joining me. Uh, um, I would like to go to Mr. Kala first. Uh, so this gruesome murder of Kanaya Lal has been talked about. You know, the PM has been talking about it. Home Minister Amit Shah has been talking about it. Of course, radicalization is a very serious concern. But do you think that this is something that could help the BJP? Because when it comes to national security, the pri party has primarily made it a focus. But what is the sentiment on ground? Is it a poll issue? Well, the BJP is certainly wanting to make it a poll issue. Will it? deliver for them or not will be seen only on the third. But every other rally, this murder, this gruesome murder is being brought out by PKP and not just by the PM or Home Minister, every other leader. So their uh, whole strategy is moving around that, that we will take an action against it. Radicalization will be stopped. And they are looking, you know, the way they are pinpointing the uh, incident, they are only looking at incidents which involved a Hindu or a Muslim. Other incidents of law and order don't come into picture right now. So the BJP, with all its efforts, is trying to make sure that this becomes a central issue and they are uh, putting their entire strategy around it. So BJP is pushing a lot of it, but will it deliver for them or not will be seen only on the third. Shipra, uh, uh, you know, this law and order being a very emotive issue, of course, it is, uh, you know, it is a very important issue. But in Rajasthan, uh, is the sentiment against the government when it comes to law and order? Because, you know, uh, you hear of these increasing rape cases, but also you see the government saying that there is this policy of uh, filing compulsory FIR and the investigation also being expedited. So what is the sentiment like when it comes to law and order? Is the BJP's plank on uh, law and order actually picking up on ground? Uh, law, and, uh, law and order issue has been a serious issue all through these five years of uh, Nello's tenure. Uh, for that reason, I, I think that 2.51 crore of female voters in Rajasthan is going to be very crucial. And hence, if you see the entire campaigning of both the parties, they have been focusing women voters largely and they have been making this issue that women's safety and uh, security. Uh, because. Uh, while Gelud government, of course, uh, is justifying, uh, you know, their stance that the increase in number is because of this reason that we have uh, given this uh, facility or we have facilitated more, uh, you know, uh, that more FIRs are fine for that reason. And that has been an argument. But the fact remains that uh, law and order situation has been uh, a critical issue in Rajasthan. Uh, and whether it will turn out into, uh, you know, whether uh, women voters are going to express it that way, uh, that is going to be seen. Because last time also when I had traveled to across all constituencies, this was a big election issue last time. This time also when I traveled to certain constituencies, women are worried about their safety. But largely, I think, uh, Rasuda, uh, the uh, larger sentiment I see on the ground is that people or especially the youth because there are 22 lakh new voters which have been added this uh, uh, you know this time they are going to be first time voters and for them i think they are very silent they are not opening up and if you if you ask them because rajasthan voters are very smart and silent also and if you ask them that who you are going to vote in in uh, in uh, rather they ask you that the uh, batao kun vote deva so they in turn ask you and never reveal uh, what what is there going in, uh, in their mind. But the fact is that nine paper leaks, I think that has been a big issue because in rural India or the, in the towns in Rajasthan, um, most of the families are directly affected by this uh, factor because uh, there are 33 lakh youth who have been enrolled as you know as un unemployed uh, or have uh, participated in these exams. So I think that these two issues are are going to be really larger issues, Vasudha. Right. And I also think that, you know, initially in the election campaigning, when ERCP uh, became a big issue for both the uh, uh, parties, you know, Congress was also banking on ERCP issue and uh, uh, BJP was also raising it in a big way. And suddenly this issue has vanished. Uh, and uh, while in past uh, week, if you see that national issues were rather, you know, pushed right. more by BJP, Hmm. And suddenly, uh, in, in these uh, recent rallies, uh, Modi has been pitching the drug issue yes. and women's safety issue. So the, so the localization, which was really missing in BJP campaign earlier, uh, I think has, has been propping up now.
Oh, that, that's a very important point. Ms. Gupta, so this is also the first time since 2003 the BJP has not projected Vasundra Rajay as the CM face, opting for collective leadership. And collective leadership is something that's become a catchphrase this election season. So leaders, even BJP leaders like Gajendra Singh Shekhawat, you have Arjun Meghwal, they're not fielded in elections and they are seen as strong contenders for the CM post. And you have Diya Kumari, you have a whole lot of uh, state leaders like Rajendra Rathor, Satish Punya. Do you think this collective leadership which by the BJP has helped uh, the party to at least put together this unified face for the campaign, you know, even optics wise. Well, obviously, the, uh, the BJP leadership wanted to present a united face and therefore it is not mentioning, uh, uh, it has not named a leader. But this has been some, their practice before. But I think the real key thing is that the BJP leadership is determined to keep Vasudhara Raje out of the picture. Because she, uh, of all these leaders, she is the most, uh, you know, popular leader. And, which, uh, and that is why we are seeing that it is the prime minister himself who is sort of, he is the face of the BJP campaign, not any of these other leaders. And he is banking on his own face, uh, you know, uh, getting the BJP through. Uh, generally speaking, of course, the... People do feel that the BJP has an edge over the Congress uh, in this particular election. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not making a prediction, but this is what most people say yes. because of the infighting within the Congress leadership between Mr. Gaylord and Mr. Sachin Pilot. Though in, in recent days, we have seen that Rajiv Gandhi has tried to you know, share the stage with both men and Sachin Pilot has been talking about the importance of a unified leadership, etc. I think it's a close fight, really. But I think uh, the BJP leadership in Delhi wants to win this election without Vasundhara Raje. I think if they had presented Vasundhara Raje as a face, they would have made their own uh, task a little easier because she has a bigger following than any of the other leaders. Right. But 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 we know that the way uh, you know Mr. Modi and uh, uh, Mr. Amit Shah, uh, they they want to be in control of their leaders in the states. You know, they don't want satraps in the states who, you know, can call the shots. Okay. So we have to see whether the BJP leadership will be able to manage this, keep Vasundhara in check and, and still win the election convincingly. Right. Uh, Dr. Kalab, uh, tell us about, explain to me this whole Jat Gujar political dynamics and the potential play out this season. You know, Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, had rallies in both Bharatpur and Nagore and of course, they were planned keeping in mind the Jat community, which could sway the polls. That's what everyone believes. In 2018, BJP, of course, could not win uh, seats in this region. Bharatpur is, Bharatpur is also seen as a politically active region for both parties. And it is some, it's a place that shares boundaries with other states like UP and Haryana. You see Nagore is also politically charged. You have uh, people like Hanuman Beliwal. You have Jyoti Mirda. Tell us how, what is going to be the play out in, in this particular part of Rajasthan. See, Jat as a community is very important. If you look at the last three elections, 8, 13, and 18, there have been 30, 33, and 34 MLAs from this community coming into Vidhan Sabha from both the parties. So this is a very important community. They bring in the maximum number of MLAs. And BJP hasn't been very popular with them. And what one thing that they have done is, uh, in the beginning of this election year, both Congress and BJP had a Jat president. And BJP midway in March changed uh, the Jat candidate and brought in a Brahmin face in form of CP Joshi. They took CP Pratish Punia out. So that also angered a section of Jat. So the BJP is trying very hard to woo it. This time, uh, uh, Hanuman Beniwal is not an ally. Last time during the Lok Sabha polls, he was an ally. And the BJP left Nagot for him to make sure that it gets other Jat votes. So Jat voters is something that the BJP is struggling with. Uh, in the Nagor area and western part of Rajasthan. And when it comes to the eastern Rajasthan, Vasudha, which, which you spoke about, in last election, the Gujar, Meena and Jat combination worked for the Congress and the Congress swept the eastern Rajasthan region. Core districts were such that the, BJ, uh, the BJP could not open its own score. There was only one MLA from this whole region that came into BJP. But this time around, you know, with Sachin Pilot not being made the chief ministry, the chief minister of Rajasthan, something that the Gujars were opening, and that uh, 
the 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 combination was Sachin Pilot and the Meena votes and Vishwendra Singh with the Jat votes. Now all these three communities are opened up. Such was the impact of Mr. Pilot that the BJP fielded 12 Gujar candidates in right. Gujar dominated seats, and the Congress fielded candidates from other communities, and none of the BJP Gujar MLAs could make his way into the Vidhan Sabha. Okay. So this was the impact that Sachin Pilot had. Right. But this time, he not getting the top job that the Gujars were aspiring. The Congress is certain to not get that kind of support. So that might swing some votes, and that might compensate BJP for the Jat votes itself. Right. So you know, the area-wise, the casts are playing out differently. Right. Uh, Shipra, ma'am, tell us uh, tomorrow. Congress, of course, is releasing its manifesto, and there is this speculation that they could be talking about legal guarantees for MSP. Now, that's of course, uh, you know, it's debatable if it is possible or not. But do you think that could have an impact on certain communities, or what is left for the Congress to promise now that they've not done in their guarantees already? Mm -hmm. That's that's right, Prasuda. That nothing is actually left for the Congress to announce. But apparently, this election uh, is uh, guarantee elections. because uh, modi is saying that modi guarantee uh, is important and uh, i think the congress is already playing the card that it has already rolled out so many schemes and policies which are going to have impact and which is really important because uh, modi in, in his campaigning also has referred to uh, the uh, the policies and the schemes announced by gehlot and he has said that if we become uh we we come into par we are not going to uh, uh, you know discard or you know uh, ignore those uh, policies so that has an impact and uh, apparently i think uh, whatever promise they'll make uh, it's it, it is a, a a a question whether people are going to believe it or not because 5 years they they have already ruled and uh, uh, last i i mean in in this campaigning they have been banking on more freebies so freebies is uh, not uh, not something which really the uh, rajasthan voters uh, can be wooed uh, from because now the real issue in the minds of people is development right. uh, regionally also in every constituency if you speak to people there they are really worried about the development and they really want some good leadership to lead them though the options are really limited because the caste politics which we i, I really feel sorry and a shame talking about caste politics in this era uh, but the entire election and entire conversation and the entire narrative narrative that has been building in this election also is around caste root caste and religion which is really sad but right. if you talk to common people basuda i'm just giving an example hmm. of a village i recently visited uh, it's a it's a uh, you know uh, it's a village uh, uh, you know in abu called salga hmm. they paid 1000 rupees one and half years back for the pipeline water pipeline to their homes and they are saying that we are waiting for past one and half years for water to come to our right these are the basic issues the tribal areas uh, right. uh, at hmm. you know eight districts are there in rajasthan which are really suffering and unfortunately these real issues of suffering of the people uh, basic amenities you know right. water access these are missing in this election right. so i really do not want to talk about religious or caste politics which right. is not Of course, not yes. Yeah. Smita, so, I'm the last word from you. Of course, the macro picture. What does this election or whatever the outcome is mean for two big leaders, Ashok Gehlot and Vasundra Rajee? We've seen them as I grew up at least. So, uh, tell me, you know, Ashok Gehlot was also uh, pitched to be the next Congress president, but of course, he was not ready to leave his state. We saw Vasundra Rajee; she's been one of those um, lauded, successful chief ministers of the BJP, female chief ministers of the BJP. How do you see the outcomes having? um you know an impact on the political careers of these two stalwarts well uh, you know uh, for ashok gelot uh, he has been uh, you know a chief minister three times so and he as as you pointed out he was go he was tipped to be the president of the congress party he chose not to take up that position because he felt that uh, you know that he would be able to wield more power in rajasthan than he, he would be at the center uh frankly i think that was a mistake because it was time for mr gelot to move on mr gelot if you look back at his career uh it it is quite a illustrious career uh, when he was in his early 30s he was part of indira gandhi's 
council of ministers he was i think the youngest minister in her government so so he has had a very very long innings as a minister and it was time for him i think to move to the center because the center really needed in the congress needed to be strengthened uh if he loses this election uh it it will be, i mean he will probably blame uh, sachin pilot but it will be a setback for him uh but i don't think it will be as much of a setback for him as um, because the congress leadership is not in a mood to destroy mr gelot in the uh, where for vasundhara raje uh, you know uh Uh, the 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 Kong, the bjp leadership is in a mood to destroy her so you know right. i mean she uh, really uh, will face a lot of difficulty however even if the bjp uh, uh, if the bjp wins this election there is no guarantee that vasundhara raje will be made chief minister right. in fact it's very unlikely there are all kinds of other names that are being spoken off right so uh, i think for vasundhara raje it right. is a much tougher journey yes Thank you, Ms. Gupta. Thank you, uh, Shipra Ma'am, and thank you, Mr. Kalla, for joining us. That was a panel of experts on Rajasthan elections, the issues and highlights of the campaign. My colleague Harsha Singh spoke to the Chief Minister of Rajasthan, Ashok Gehlot, a short while ago. Let's listen to what he had to say. वैसे उन्हें राजनीति के जादूगर कहते हैं, और आज प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी ने भी कहा है कि कुछ लोग अपने आप को यहाँ पर जादूगर कह रहे हैं। सर, आज प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी ने भी कहा कि कुछ लोग यहाँ पर अपने आप को जादूगर बताते हैं। प्रधानमंत्री जी कुछ भी बोल देते हैं वो एकदम बोखला गए हैं राजस्थान के परफॉर्मेंस को इतने अच्छे काम किए इतने स्कीम हमारे आई है इतने अच्छे कानून पास हुए इतनी अच्छी गारंटी हम दे रहे हैं उनके बाद कहने कुछ भी नहीं है इसलिए वो कभी जादूगर की बात करेंगे कभी मेरे मित्र की बात करेंगे कभी मेरे मित्र बताएंगे कभी वापिस वो कमेंट कर देंगे बाप बेटे दोनों पे कमेंट कर देंगे ये मैं समझता हूँ कि उनके बुकलाट का पैसा है कि अच्छा गारंटी की जो बात है वो वो भी आप गारंटी शब्द यूज कर रहे हैं वो तो गारंटी सब हमसे सीखे हैं हाँ। हमने कर्नाटक में गारंटी दी है हिमाचल में दी है राजस्थान में गारंटी दे रहे हैं हाँ। तो वो गारंटी पे आ गए हैं असली गारंटी हमारी है जो पब्लिक इंटरेस्ट की है आप सातों गारंटी को देख लीजिए एक से बढ़ गई गारंटी हमारे पास इतनी एनर्जी सर इस एज में भी आप खूब कर लेते हैं कहा से आती इतनी एनर्जी पब्लिक आम जनता से एनर्जी आती है वही मेरे काम आती है ये आम जनता की एनर्जी जो है वो कोई विकल्प नहीं है किसी दवा का देखिए आप कितना प्यार है जी सर मैंने देखा है आपके सामने कितनी चुनौतियां आई है लेकिन आप कभी कभी भी आप ना आप डरे हुए या परेशान नहीं रखते कभी भी ये एनर्जी का स्रोत है सर जब चुनौतियां भी आती हैं तो आप कभी परेशान नहीं लगते ये मैंने नोटिस किया आपके साथ क्योंकि आप मेरे को आप मैंने आपको काफी साल से कवर किया है अगर सच्चाई दिल में हो तो परेशान होने की जरूरत नहीं होती है दिल में सच्चाई होनी चाहिए सर कैसा लग रहा है अब कैंपेन ईस्टर्न राजस्थान में काफी बढ़त बढ़ा ली आप लोग ने सरकार बनाने वाली है बनने वाली है सरकार बनेगी आम जनता ने तय कर लिया है जनता माई बाप होती है मैं समझता हूँ इस बार जनता ने मुल्क बना लिया है रिपीट करें आपके पास चुनौतियां बहुत थी आपके कार्यकाल में कोरोना था फिर पार्टी में भी गड़बड़ हुई थी लेकिन आप ऑन टॉप आ गए सबसे क्या कहते हैं आप इसके बारे में खासकर जो विद इन द पार्टी जो रिबेलियन हुआ था कहीं आपको दुख होता है उसको लेकर गया वो बीत गया अब तो हम लोग सब मिलकर के चुनाव घर जीते हैं चुनाव जीतना राजस्थान के हित में है राजस्थान के हित के अंदर भी है बाकी तो कांग्रेस हित में भी है देश हित में भी है पर राजस्थान के हित में है कि रिपीट होगी सरकार तो हम जम के काम कर पाएंगे सर लास्ट क्वेश्चन आपने कहा था कि मैं मुख्यमंत्री का पद छोड़ना चाहता हूँ लेकिन मेरे से नहीं छूटता है और तो क्या है वॉट इज गोइंग सी एम डिसीजन इफ यू विन दी तो हाईकमांड और विधायक जितने की बात करते हैं थोड़ा इंतजार कीजिए तीन तारीख का वाइस फैसला होगा थैंक यू So that was Rajasthan Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot speaking to NDTV on the prospects of the party. NDTV also spoke to Diya Kumari, BJP MP and candidate in the Assembly polls from Vidyadhar Nagar in Jaipur. Let's listen to what she had to say. धन्यवाद बहुत बहुत अभी आपने कहा कि न जाने क्यों बीजेपी मेरी हर बार सीट बदल देती है नहीं नहीं मैंने इनको हंसी में कहा मजाक कर रही थी मैं मैंने कहा बीजेपी हमेशा मुझे नई जगह भेजती है 
और मैं क्या करती हूँ जहाँ मुझे भेजा जाता है वहाँ पर पूरा तैयारी से तैयार करती हूँ मैं क्योंकि मुझे मालूम है कि पाँच साल बाद जब मैं इनके बीच में जाऊँगी वोट मांगने तो खाली हाथ नहीं जाऊँगी तो मैं अपना सारा काम शुरू से ही तैयारी से रहती हूँ कि पाँच साल बाद जाऊँगी वोट लूँगी ये ये काम बताऊँगी पर हर बार मुझे अपने आप ही ऐसा होता है भारतीय जनता पार्टी है वो हमेशा ही और देखिए पार्टी कैसी है किसी को भी कहीं से चुनाव लड़ाने भेजती है भेजती है और वहाँ से जिताती भी है तो ये बहुत विशेषता है हमारी पार्टी की कि हम लोग कहीं से भी चुनाव लड़ भी सकते हैं और जीत भी सकते हैं क्योंकि हमारा जो पार्टी का कार्यकर्ता है वो दिन रात लगा रहता है जनता के बीच में तो जब कोई नया व्यक्ति जाके चुनाव में वोट मांगता है तो उसको ज़्यादा कुछ नहीं करना पड़ता पार्टी के प्रति इतना आ, लोगों में आ, वो है रुझाव भी है और लोग सब इतना समर्पित हैं कि नहीं हम लोग मोदी जी के काम देख के पार्टी का काम देख के हम लोग पार्टी को ही वोट देंगे 2013 में आपने पार्टी ज्वाइन की थी जब राष्ट्रीय राजनीति में नरेंद्र मोदी प्रधानमंत्री पद के उम्मीदवार बन रहे थे आपने उस वक्त पार्टी ज्वाइन की और अब 2023 तीसरा चुनाव तीसरी नई जगह है विद्याधर नगर की जनता को आप क्या कहेंगे पता लगा 2028 में जब चुनाव हो तो दिया कुमारी के और नई जगह से नहीं। <laughs> ऐसा अब देखिए ये तो पार्टी का डिसीजन होता है इसमें मैं कोई डिसाइड नहीं कर सकती और देखिए अगर नई जगह भी होती है कभी भी तो मैं ये इनको अश्योर कर सकती हूँ कि इनके काम सारे करके जाऊंगी वैसे होपफुली नेक्स्ट टाइम विद्याधर नगर से ही मौका मिलेगा लगातार जो पिछली बार प्रत्याशी थे कांग्रेस के सीताराम अग्रवाल वो इस बार फिर से कर रहे हैं और ये जो सीट है इसका अगर मोटे तौर पर देखें तो ब्राह्मण वैश्य और राजपूत वोट बैंक बड़ा मायने रखता है इस सीट के लिए कितना टफ आप अपने लिए मान रही हैं क्योंकि सीधा आप सांसद से वापस विधायक पद पर आई हैं और विधायक का चुनाव लड़ रही हैं पहले आप विधायक थी कुछ लोग कहते हैं कि पॉलिटिकली ये डिमोशन है वो तो समय ही बताएगा डिमोशन है कि नहीं लेकिन मैं ये बोल रही हूँ कि डिमोशन और प्रमोशन वाली बात नहीं है सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट बात ये है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार राजस्थान में बन रही है चाहे कोई भी कुछ भी बोले चाहे गहलोत जी कुछ भी कह दें कोई भी झूठी बातें करें गारंटीज पे गारंटीज की झूठी बातें करें कोई उनको बिलीव नहीं कर रहा है उन्होंने फेल हो चुके हैं वो उनका टाइम अप हो चुका है और हमारा मोदी सरकार जिस तरह से हमारे संकल्प पत्र में जो कुछ लिखा है बहुत विजन के साथ लिखा है सोच के साथ लिखा है ऐसी घोषणाएं नहीं की है जो हम पूरी नहीं कर सकते कांग्रेस तो कह रही है पूरा संकल्प पत्र हमारी गारंटीज का कॉपी पेस्ट कर दिया बिल्कुल भी नहीं है हमारी सरकार जो कहती है कर दिखाती है इनकी सरकार कुछ भी नहीं करती सिर्फ झूठे वादे करती है झूठी बातें करती है जब इनका इनकी सत्ता में जब इनकी सरकार नहीं बनी थी उस समय भी इन्होंने तीन चार बातें कही थी उनमें से एक बात भी पूरी नहीं की कहाँ दिया बेरोजगारी भत्ता युवाओं को कहाँ पर इन्होंने किसानों के कर्ज माफ किए कुछ भी नहीं किया क्या बातें करते हैं